So apparently, school is boring. Um, or this is at least what I'm told uh, a few times by a few of my students. Um, and I think they're onto something. And don't get me wrong, I try my best to engage my students and to inspire passion in what they learn. But I would like you to revisit high school in your mind, just for a few seconds, as painful as that might be. You take about six to eight classes each day, and picture yourself back in English class, where you're trying to, your best to understand why Ophelia has gone mad during uh, Hamlet's Act Four. And then you have five minutes after the bell rings to pack all your stuff, run to your next class so you're not late, maybe biology class, and as soon as you sit down, there's already a question on the board. And you have to understand why the mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cell. Every classroom pretty much looks the same. There are rows of desks that are facing forward towards a whiteboard. There's a student desk, and in most classrooms, students are mere vessels that are receiving information that then is, they're asked to regurgitate just sometime later. Every assignment has very specific guidelines and instructions to follow. And of course, there's a rubric for everything. And students learn that as long as they fit all the guidelines from those rubrics, they succeed. And success is measured by a grade. So I want you to raise your hand if this sounds like most of your high school experience. All right, good, mine too. So I want to give you a few seconds to read this quote. And now I want you to raise your hand again if you think that your high school experience got you ready to create, to innovate, and to develop novel solutions to complex, rapidly growing problems in today's world. I feel the same way. My colleagues and I ask each other this question all the time. Are we getting students ready? Ready for an ever-changing world that has ubiquitous information and access to it is constantly at their fingertips, literally. And where problem solving and innovative solutions are at a super premium. So why is innovation relegated to the few? We talk about innovators as outliers, and we write books and make movies about them. And we celebrate the fact that they were able to innovate in spite of the box that they were in. We always call them outside-the-box thinkers, and that box was the educational system they were in. I'm here to tell you that I don't believe there's anything wrong with our students' ability to innovate, but I do think that we could do something to change the size or the, or the shape of that box that is our current educational system. Teachers are not really trained to innovate as well. They also work in their own box, their box of standardized tests, unified curricula, and recycled pedagogical ideas. Sir Ken Robinson, who has authored multiple books on the topic of education, and who also gave one of the TED Talks uh, most watched of all time, uh, he says that in schools, we are teaching students out of their creativity. We know kids are creative, and they are born ready to innovate and take risks. But somehow, in our schools, they lose that ability. So how can we create schools that empower our students and facilitate that problem solving and that ability to create and innovate? I'm here today to tell you a story, a story of how at my school, William Tennant at High School, we are trying to change the traditional educational paradigm by leveraging the power of partnerships. For us, a partnership is a relationship between our school and an individual, a local organization, or a regional or an international corporation. All partnerships start with a personal relationship between somebody at our school and our outside partners. That relationship leads to the creation of an idea, an idea that fits the core mission of our school as well as our partners. At Tenet, we have partnerships with ShopRite, with Truemark Financial, with Eli Lilly Pharmaceutical, and we also partner, have partnerships with individual people, scientists at Fox Chase Cancer Center or St. Joe's University, as well as other neighboring schools and even medical students at Drexel Medical School. 
I would like to illustrate to you why we believe that partnerships are already changing the way that some of our students are experiencing their education. And I want to illustrate the point to you by talking about our partnership with Eli Lilly Pharmaceutical. Eli Lilly is a global company that develops medicines that um, help millions of people around the world. They develop medicines um, on uh, to treat diabetes, various types of cancer, um, Alzheimer's disease. And this relationship with Eli Lilly started like any other type of relationship, or any type of partnership, excuse me, with a personal relationship. Pictured above is Joe Kim, who is a senior advisor in the clinical innovation department at Eli Lilly. And my relationship to him is that his kids go to school with my kids. And as I got to know Joe, um, I knew that we shared some common ideas and some beliefs about education. So this specific partnership started over a dinner, a dinner in which we went back and forth, ideas grew into bigger ideas, and our ultimate idea was to create a tenant incubator, a tenant think tank. Again, Joe's mission is to decrease the time from the point where a drug is discovered or developed to the point that drug goes out to market. In other words, he wants to get medicines in the hands of people that can benefit from them quicker. So our idea was, what if we have two groups of three students that work at Tenet and are mentored throughout the summer by Joe and other healthcare professionals and are advised by some faculty members as well, and they work to create innovative solutions to problems that Eli Lilly and Joe's team are currently working on. How do we help Joe decrease that time so that we can get medicine in the hands of people quicker? My colleagues and I at Tenet believe in partnerships because we believe that they not only teach students, but they demand students to create and to innovate. We know because we have talked to them and we have data that says that our students are more ready for college and for career. We also know that when we have a partner with us, the student's learning becomes relevant and increases their engagement. And we also know that the expertise that we bring from those partners is crucial for students as well as for teachers to innovate. So what I want to do is I want to use the students' voices that participated in the Eli Lilly program last summer to illustrate these four big ideas. So creation and innovation. I want to start with a couple of quotes from Caitlin. And Caitlin was one of the six students that participated in the program. And just like the other five students, Caitlin is a fantastic student. She's bright, she's dedicated, and she knows how to do school. She knows exactly how to follow those criteria, those guidelines, and how to make her assignments fit the requirements of those rubrics. But when we started in the summer, the first couple of weeks, Caitlin was frustrated. And I remember seeing this frustration in Caitlin because when Joe Kim, presented the challenge to Caitlin and the rest of the groups, the only guidelines were, here's the problem, develop a solution. This is not the way that Caitlin was used to learning. So she found it very frustrating to have this lack of criteria. I didn't have the answers, Joe didn't have the answers. To her credit, Caitlin realized that this was something that was gonna make her grow, and it required her to create and to innovate. I also really like this quote from Caitlin, because I hear this from my students all the time. I'm a science teacher, so I get a lot of students who are interested in science, and they tell me, you know what, Mr. Hayo, I'm just not a creative person. I'm just not that creative. I'm just, I'm science-y. I'm, I'm good at math. I'm good at science. But I think what's happening here is that students are confusing creativity with being artistic. And don't get me wrong, creating a great piece of art requires a lot of creativity. But my wife, who's also a teacher, says that creativity should not be subject-specific. Caitlin, as well as the rest of her students, needed to learn to be creative in order to come up with new, novel, innovative solutions. This is our students in our think tank. There were no rows of desks. Um, I was not talking to them in front of the classroom. Um, there were whiteboards all around the classroom, and you can see that there isn't much space in them. Um, this was very much a self-centered, um, organic learning activity for them. There were stickies all over the wall, um, and they were sharing information, learning from one another, uh, while, again, they were being mentored by uh, Joe and his team. 
Our second big idea was, was relevance and engagement. Um, and I think Phil touched on this uh, during the, the keynote speech at the beginning. Uh, one of the questions that I get a lot as a teacher is, Mr. Hyatt, why, why do I need to know this? Am I ever going to use this ever again? Um, and that speaks to the relevance. I want Jocelyn, Jocelyn's quote or Jocelyn's voice to do the talking here. Jocelyn, much like Caitlin, is a great student, straight A student, and again, she knew what to do to get an A. But this was an assignment like no other assignment she had experienced before. Jocelyn knew that what she was doing and what she was potentially developing could change society and have a positive effect on the world. Talk about relevance. Talk about meaning to what these students were doing. Because their learning had extreme relevance and meaning, our students were intrinsically motivated. The ultimate moment of relevance also came during our capstone event because of our relationship with Eli Lilly as well as Joe Kim. Our students were invited to present at Stanford University last September at the MedEx conference, which is a conference that gets together healthcare experts and patient advocates so that patients can become uh, more involved in their own care. MedEx is the most tweeted and retweeted event of that weekend. My students told me to tell you that it's even more retweeted than Kardashian's tweets. Um, I don't know what that means, but they said that would be funny. Um, and this is a picture of our six students. They're four very, very proud teachers and their proud mentor right after they completely did a fantastic job of presenting their new ideas at Stanford. So talk about accountability and relevance. Our students knew throughout the whole summer that this is what was happening. And I've had this happen when other professionals come to observe some of my students' presentations. When they do it for me, it kind of feels like a rehearsal. But when they have a healthcare professional or any other kind of professional attending their presentations, it's like they're doing it for real that time. Our third big idea is college career and readiness. Um, four of the students that participated in our program last summer uh, were seniors and have now just completed their first year of college. So I want to use Will's voice here, and I really like two of his quotes. So I had Will um, in school three times, as a sophomore, as a junior, as a senior, uh, for three different classes. But it was the experience last summer that Will points out to gave him the ability to problem solve. He got skills that were not content or subject specific. He got skills that he was able to translate into his engineering courses at Penn State. He believes that because of this, the ability to problem solve and the ability to go through the design process of creating new solutions, this has set him apart from other students in a very, very competitive field of engineering. Finally, I want to touch on the point of expertise. So I want to use John's voice here and John's quote. John's quote here expresses a sentiment that was shared by every other student within the Lilly program last summer. Every student was extremely grateful to every one of these very accomplished professionals and the fact that they were willing to spend their time and their expertise to mentor them through this process. And this was very meaningful to them. From a personal note, I must say that these partnerships have benefited me just as much as the students. The expertise that Joe brought into what we did last summer he showed me how he teaches, how he runs projects, how he runs problem solving sessions. And all of those skills that come from outside of education have allowed me to innovate the way I teach as well. This is uh, Joe with uh, Jerry Matzak and Mark Springer, as well as Jeff Lee from Illy Lilly and Improve Health. Um, so we had individuals that were mentoring um, our students throughout the entire summer. I also want to mention some of our um, relationships and partnerships that we have built with individuals. I was lucky enough a couple of years ago to be invited to take a course called Immersion Science, um, which they have for high school students as well as high school teachers at Fox Chase Cancer Center, and which was developed by Dr. Alana O'Reilly. And that course was the catalyst that inspired me to start my own genetics class um, in school. Now, through that program, I was also extremely fortunate to meet Dr. Amanda Purdy, who's also a scientist at Fox Chase who not only is a brilliant scientist, but also very passionate about teaching. Amanda has spent many hours with me on the phone. She has answered to many emails, and she has even come to my classroom and helped my students through. I also want to mention Dr. Elizabeth Becker from St. Joe's, who is a neuroscientist who runs her own research and also teaches classes. I have built a relationship with her by which I have been able to take some of my students to one of her behavioral neuroscience classes. What I have learned from all of them has changed the way I do things in my classroom every single day. Before then, 
I sort of, you know, think that I was a regular science teacher that probably ran a pretty typical science class where most of the labs were prepackaged and had specific instructions, and each lab had a predicted outcome, and you either got it or not, and then we talked about what happened. Because of them, and what they model and what they have taught me, I am, my genetic students now make their own schedule. They're creating their own questions, um, developing and running their own independent research, and some of them are even um, taking the choice of developing new innovative ideas that can hopefully help the cancer community as a whole. Now, I also want to talk about the fact that in order for us to develop this successful partnerships with outside partners, this can only be done because I have been really, really lucky to work with some very, very talented co-workers who share the same belief and the same passion that I have that we can change education through partnerships. So this is my team, and they each bring something to the table that I do not. I have Al Kataro, who's a partnership guru and has been doing this for many, many more years than I have. Um, Steve Beal, um, who is sort of one of those people that can see a few steps ahead and keeps everything uh, moving and manages projects really well. Rena Friedan, who can permeate creativity and design thinking into everything she does. Now, this also happens because we have an, an administration that not only allows us to do what we do, but supports us because they believe in our mission. So Dr. Bess, who's our principal, and the rest of the administration team have given us the resources and the time that we needed to build a partnership within our school first before we could build successful partnerships outside of our school. So I want to leave you with another quote from Jocelyn. So Jocelyn says here that her experience last summer offered her something that no college or high school course could have ever offered. Now, in a way, that makes me feel good because I know that at least some of our students are experiencing their education differently by leveraging this power of these partnerships. But I think it also talks to our greatest challenge moving forward. How do we make sure that these partnerships affect the way that not just a few of our students in the summer or a few of our students in our science classes are experiencing their education. How do we make sure that all of our students are able to experience their education this way? So I want to leave you with a challenge. And my challenge is, if you're an educator, I challenge you to ask anyone who would listen, as many times as they would listen, to partner with you and tell them that with them, do you want to change education and the way that some students experience education? If you are an industry professional, I challenge you to mentor some of these students because your mentorship is tremendously meaningful to them. I believe that together we can break the walls that make up that box of traditional education and we can reimagine a new size and a new shape for that box. Thank you very much for listening.